This is such a critical moment and I have such high hopes for them. Mikasa not looking too confident. I mean, she has some power. I think that's been established. Maybe she's the female titan. And that's what's hard to believe. There's something else he has planned. Arm and slap in faith. I think it just means he doesn't fear Zeke and Yelena. He doesn't need to tell them. Right, protect the island with the rumbling. Only protect. Only defense. Only defend. Never attack. I don't know where you go from here at this group. They just don't have any information. <laughs> Slash his dad is done. He's got to help the children avoid the forest. <laughs> Take a little moment to gloat. He's pretty badass. Especially when he puts on jackets. I believe it. <laughs> they all love him like in the weirdest of ways. And that so perfectly encapsulates a lot of Eren, I think, in the show. Uh, you know, it's such an internal battle always watching Eren because he's got all this power combined with all this rage and often a very sort of black and white way of looking at the world. But there's something so magnetic and powerful about him. I think way back in the beginning, one thing I often said about Eren was like, just get out of this guy's way because the, the pure drive he has, the passion, the ambition is unmatched. Not only does he have that ambition, but now it's connected to what he's actually doing and he's in charge, it feels like. This came up in My Hero Academia too, but therein lies the danger because there's this idea that's often tested in the show that's something like the world is just inherently chaotic and cruel and so there's no code of conduct. There's no actual goodness. It's just choices, right? But personally, I think there's a very strong argument to be made that it's not random, that there is something like goodness. There is something like true, pure morality. And that is something that will work well when widely applied and will be enduring and will lead to less suffering, big picture. And I think a real personal connection to these ideas is possible. You know, I think those things can be understood deeply and, and lived. And I think that is part of the hero's journey, you know? But I actually think that that's not the way we usually experience good conduct or good actions or being good people. At some point, people came along and experienced massive suffering, you know, people like Sasha's father, for example. And through witnessing tragedy and witnessing things unfold in a way that made things so much worse for, for everyone, even when the stated goal was something beautiful, they sort of woke up and realized, ah, this is where that leads. And so with that strength, they then sort of carve out a space. They try to pass that information to others. But the problem is, like with all ideas, there's sort of the pure understanding of it. There's a source of it, which is somewhat lost in translation, because in order to really, really understand something deeply, it takes more than just hearing it. So what happens is people start following rules and those rules come from a good place. But once those people start living those rules, they've lost the connection to that source. And so it just becomes about obedience. And the primary motivation is not goodness out of real understanding of consequences, but more like fear of punishment, fear of reprisal. And so without that real connection or understanding to why goodness is good, there's a discord between what our impulses want us to do, what we're driven to do, and the ceiling we feel on what we can do. And so anybody who comes along and breaks through that barrier where they're not afraid of the consequences, where they're outside of the law or outside of the system other people have pressed on them, it's appealing because it is on some level freedom. It's like for the first time freedom to be what you're screaming to be. And so people like Aaron and even villains in other shows are going to get a lot of respect and a big following because of how great that feels and how great it would feel to be actually free in that way. The problem is that's not the final level of assessment, in my opinion. One higher than that is being free and good. You know, understanding what things are, understanding that other people are deserving of the same freedom and deserving of the same respect and are not expendable and are not tools towards that end, etc. That is where the ultimate is. But Aaron, as far as I can see so far, is not there yet. But people are going to place their faith in him because he has something they lack, which is like, in some level, a purity of action, a free freedom of action. And I definitely feel that pull. But also for them, he's a friend. I mean, it's been so well established. Their bond, they've just been through so much together. They've had all these amazing moments. And I think Eren does have regard for them too. He doesn't hate Mikasa, I don't think. I think there's real disgust mixed in there, but I think it's complicated. <laughs> Armin has doubt. He doesn't look that confident in this. I mean, I think for Mikasa, it's got to be all those things together. Even if there is that sort of Ackerman bond or whatever, there's no denying the, the bond that they share just as individuals without anything, you know, supernatural. People are still trying to use Reiner. How many times has Eren started out losing a battle, a Titan battle, only to come back? It's such a great line that he can have compassion for Eren at this moment. Here we go, here's the wrestling. I think so does Aaron. They do have a lot of common though. There's so many parallels between them. Oh 
Oh my god. Lena's having a great time. What just hit him? He's back. <laughs> and there's no Levi around, sadly. This shifts the scales in such a huge way. But I feel like Zeke's in for a disappointment at some point. <laughs> Damn, what an opening. I'm so in love with this song too. There's a weird sadness to Zeke, like, looking to Eren for brotherhood. He just seems so lonely. Like, I'm seeing the Red Swan version of him right now where he's just this little boy. This little boy looking for family. Life is pain and terrible and everyone's betrayed me. But at least I got my little bro Eren. At least I got my little bro Eren, he'll always love me. Sneak attack! I can't believe I have to watch baseball again. I can't believe I'm watching this again. This ends up being the most devastating attack somehow, always. And Zeke knows how to fight a military. This has got to be really crazy too for like, peak fighting Zeke. Doc Titan and Monkey Titan fighting. Who would have ever thought, back in those early episodes, now Zeke has no one to carry his baseballs. Just leave. Just surrender. <laughs> knowing Nod. This show is always just so genius, making it so difficult knowing who to root for. They're all just so damn cool. Wise of you. Yeah, Gabby had a nice break as a child, and now it's back to war. Gabby also has experienced winning wars. But can she make it out with her soul intact? Things have changed. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> you can't fake what John John has at this point in terms of leadership. He's earned it. <laughs> I mean, he did great. Respect. Shadis' life can still have meaning. It would feel so great to me somehow if Shadis ended up rising to something great, you know, like, after all that talk of not being worthy and failing and being beaten by his unrequited love's angry son, for him to pull out a victory would just be such a great thing, you know? It's never too late. It's only when you've lost everything, you're free to do anything. You only are what you do next, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> when has Pix ever been unstable? Very honest, although we all know. But does that mean he also is, uh, Zeke fodder? Yep, perspective has changed. I'm not going to forget that jail room conversation. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's... Wow, that's huge. She's gearing herself up for something massive. What are they... What is their actual... Full goal? What are they thinking right now? I can't even imagine the conflict. Helena. <laughs> Having a wonderful time. Still. The Wallace are not going to be happy. <laughs> it does feel like a major turning point. Tides have definitely shifted. Paradise Island surprise attack. The goal of the surprise attack is to retake the Founding Titan and not crash all our blimps into the wall. How's that surprise working out for you? Blimps? <laughs> yeah. I got some bad news for you. Unclear. Careful with this, Armin. What in the world? Oh! Yeah, hold on a sec. Yeah. That was good of him. She's still dealing with this. And so is Gabby. Looks like it got in. <gasps> wow. It did get in. It got in deep. Mine was dropping hints back in the day. 
Open birdcage. He just loves Gabby. Yeah, it's sad that Eren lured him in by taking advantage of his sweet nature. <laughs> One of the things I love about this kind of moment, I think it's more relevant than is immediately apparent. You know, it's a great tool of power to give people emotion, you know, to make people feel personally identified to a cause and give them the illusion that they'll actually reap the benefits of that thing, that they're actually connected to the result. Like, for example, these kids, at one point, they thought they were a part of Marley and they thought they would reap the benefits of supporting Marley, but they're not going to get any of that. They're just tools and they're just as much the enemy in the Marleyans' minds as the people on Paradise Island. And so there's this big illusion happening happening where they've been wrapped up in someone else's game. And that is way more pervasive, I think, than people realize. I think anytime there are, there are sides like this, where there's this like concrete enemy class and these people must be taken down for the good of society, that is probably not something that individuals came with on their own. It was probably an idea that was pre-created and sort of passed down. And people are willing to accept that and fight for it because it gives them something that they're craving, something deeply connected to their root identity and therefore their emotions, like being good or being free or being rights or being powerful or whatever it is. But speaking of freedom, I think true freedom and true power exists in breaking those bonds somewhat, or at least being able to question them and see that the bigger picture is that all of these people are way more similar than they realize. And so with that knowledge, what do they actually want to do? What are they actually supporting? It's so alluring and so easy and feels so good even to be part of that identity. Like I am one of the good guys. I have a connection to something bigger than my, my lone existence, you know? And because of that personal connection, that emotional utility that brings, people will fight to the death to defend it. But that's not true freedom. It's not his fault, even if there is a connection. <laughs> All right, now, can love bloom on the battlefield? May as well tell her, I guess. <laughs> his brother's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why not? Oh yeah, he got that one little wine droplet. Who knows? We were born free in this world. I, I, don't, I wouldn't count on that. I don't know if he cares. It's gonna be so terrifying. I just love the complexity of this battle. Like all the sides, all the lines blurring. Peak? Peak? Wait, what? <gasps> Wait, for real? Oh, it's a fake out. Damn, Peach just continues to impress. <laughs> Zeke just can't catch a break. <laughs> From Peak! I just love it. Cart, Titan, Redemption. McGath also earning his place in history. I feel like the most satisfying thing would be for Zeke and Levi to have one more confrontation. Why are these episodes so short? Why do I have to wait a whole week? This is unfair. It's just so much fun. Just the sheer amount of buildup, just the sheer amount of depth of character that goes into each little element, each individual in this battle, and also the excitement of just not knowing at any moment where it's gonna go. So many of the pivotal characters are having to like develop their outlook on the fly as the people they love are dying. Like this ragtag group of leftover Irwin scouts, they must be so conflicted about what they're doing because there are doubts here. They love Eren, obviously. And I think on some level they can intuit that Eren loves them, but that's not enough. There's just so many other things happening that they have to consider. I mean, they're truly living the Levi philosophy right now where they're just doing the best they can with the information they have and then adapting. You know, there's a lot of gambling here. There's no way around it. They just don't have anything else but just following their instincts, following their hearts. But I suspect they're on a path where they will not ultimately support Eren. I think Mikasa leaving the scarf was probably the biggest sign. And I guess one of my biggest questions about that is Armin, because Armin is, he's thinking, you know, Armin is Armin, you can't turn the guy off. He knows, right? But I feel like even more than Mikasa, he's still sort of clung on to their friendship and their bond. Mikasa seems to have turned some key corner. I mean, in early season four, when Mikasa was asking Eren why he killed children, Armin was busy destroying a harbor with his colossal form. Armin gets the of the battle and be like a huge, huge thing, a colossal thing, you might say. Some very interesting stuff happening with Gabby, and I think a, a really, really massive culmination of a lot that's been building with her. This does feel like a breaking of the cycle to some degree, although you never know how things could go. Things could turn around really quickly. She does seem to have gotten something really important. Then there's Reiner, who even though he's fighting for the Marleans, and even though he's being made out to be this great like Marleyan hero, I 
feel like actually what he's connected to is something more than that. I don't think his primary motivation is winning for Marley. He's just tired. He wants out. And actually, I think so does Aaron. But I think Aaron has a very specific idea of what that looks like. I don't think he will be satisfied just ending fighting. It has to be, in his mind, like a permanent and systemic end, even though I don't think that's erasing all the alien children. And then, Doc Titan. <laughs> Redemption. Fighting Zeke was like the final thing for me where I can't believe it. I can't believe how far that's turned in my mind. I just hated Duck Titan with every cell of my body in some of those <laughs> episodes. But Duck Titan also feels free to me in a way, like actual freedom. She also seems to be fighting for the kids. So there's just so many incredible elements like developing in real time during what is just an outstanding and stunning military action sequence with like all these different conflicting sides. It's just great stuff. It's amazing stuff.